the time has come to begin EFI 2023 financial results announcement of Sony Group Corporation. I am Okada from Corporate Communications. I'll be serving as Master of Ceremonies today. Let me introduce the people on the stage. First, Hiroki Totoki, President, COO and CFO. Naomi Matsuoka, Senior Vice President, Executive Officer in charge of uh, Corporate Planning and Control, Lead of uh, Group DE and uh, I Promotion and Support for Finance and uh, Entertainment Area. Hayakawa Sadahiko, Senior Vice President, Executive Officer in charge of Finance and IR. These three uh, will be explaining the results of our FI23 and forecast for FI24 and fifth mid-range plan. After that, we are going to have Q&A. A total of 80 minutes is allocated. Now, Mr. Totoki, the floor is yours. Today, I will explain this content. Matsuoka and Hayakawa will talk about our result for FI23 and our result forecast for FI24. And I will talk about the fifth mid-range plan which started this fiscal year. Hayakawa-san, please go ahead. Thank you. FI23 consolidated sales were 13 trillion, 20.8 billion yen, a new record high. Consolidated operating income was 1 trillion, 208.8 billion yen. Net income was 970.6 billion yen. And consolidated adjusted EBDA was 1 trillion, 818 billion yen. Furthermore, the 229.4 billion yen in consolidated operating income for the previous quarter was the highest ever for a fourth quarter. Due to the partial spin-off of our financial services business, which is scheduled for October 2025 from this earnings announcement, we are also showing other figures without the financial services segment. On a consolidated basis, excluding the financial services segment, sales were 11 trillion 265 billion yen, operating income was 1 trillion 335.3 billion yen, and operating cash flow was 1 trillion 177.8 billion yen. The performance by segment for FI23 is shown on this slide. Next, I will explain our consolidated results forecast for the full FI24. Our full year forecast is sales of 12 trillion 310 billion yen, operating income of 1 trillion 275 billion yen, and a net income of 925 billion yen. On a consolidated basis, excluding the financial services segment, sales are expected to be 11 trillion 400 billion yen, and operating income is expected to increase 9% year on year to 1 trillion 130 billion yen. The forecast for consolidated operating cash flow, excluding the financial service segment, is 1 trillion 400 billion yen, a significant increase of 19% year on year. The full year forecast by segment is shown here. Now, I will move on an explanation of the overview of each business. First is G and NS segment. FI23 sales increased a significant 17% year on year to 4 trillion 267.7 million yen, mainly due to increased third party software sales and the impact of foreign exchange rates. Operating income increased 40.2%. 2 billion yen year on year to 290.2 billion yen, mainly due to the increased sales. Operating income for the previous quarter was 106 billion yen, a new record high for the fourth quarter in this segment. The FI24 forecast for sales is 4 trillion 200 billion yen, and operating income is 310 billion yen. We expect acquisition-related expenses, including expenses related to the acquisition of Bunch Inc. for this fiscal year, to be approximately 52 billion yen, a decrease of 
17 billion yen year on year. PlayStation 5 sales in the previous quarter totaled 4.5 million units, and in the full FI23, 20.8 million units. As of the end of March, cumulative unit sales of PS5 reached 59.2 million units, approaching the 60 million cumulative units sold of the PlayStation 4, which had undergone price cuts of a total of 100 US dollars in the same period since its release. We expect PS5 sales for this fiscal year to be approximately 18 million units. In terms of software, the live service game Helldivers 2, released in February, has been a hit that far exceeded expectations, with cumulative sales for both PS5 and PC in 12 weeks since its release to the beginning of May reached 12 million copies. Uh, surpassing the record set by God of War Ragnarok in the same period after its release in 2022. The game has become our biggest PC hit title to date, and as a multi-platform title, it also contributed significantly to sales and profit last quarter. Following this success, we are looking forward to the release of live service games such as the expansion content Destiny, Destiny 2 The Final Shape, which is expected to be released by Bungie on June 4th, and Concord, which is scheduled to be released this year by Firewalk Studios, which, will acquire, which we acquired in 2023. Thanks primarily to the growing eventuation of PS5, as well as the success of Helldivers 2 and third-party free-to-play titles, the number of monthly active users across PS in March remained high at 180 million accounts, up 9% year-on-year. Total playtime on PS in the month of March increased 15% year-on-year. And for the entire fourth quarter of the FI23, it reached the second highest level in history, second only to the fourth quarter of FI20, uh, which benefited from significant stay-at-home demand due to the pandemic. Looking at the console cycle, we think that the PlayStation business model has changed significantly since the launch of the PS4. The business model up to and including the PlayStation 3 was focused on increasing the number of software units sold in relation to newly sold hardware for each console generation. After a transition period during the PS4 generation, the PS5 model has shifted to one where playtime on the platform has increased due to expansion of the user community beyond console generations. Due to this change in business model during the PS4 generation, we were able to significantly grow profits in this segment thanks to rapid digitalization and the expansion of network services. In the PS5 generation, which has capitalized on the established PS4 user base, the trend is hard to see due to the impact of stay-at-home demand and acquisition-related expenses. But since the launch of the PS5, we have continued to achieve a high level of and more stable profit growth. As we enter the second half of the console cycle, we expect the number of new PS5 units sold to gradually decline. <clears throat> However, by steadily maintaining and expanding the consistently increasing number of active users and user engagement, while also strengthening control over business costs, we believe that we will be able to steadily increase sales and profits from the PS platform going forward. In addition to the stable earnings base on the PS platform, we are aiming to grow sales of first-party software, which we have been actively strengthening in recent years. And by doing so, we plan to achieve a new record high in profits in this segment during the fifth mid-range plan. Next is the music segment. FI23 sales increased a significant 17% year-on-year to 1 trillion 619 billion yen, mainly due to increased streaming sales and the impact of foreign exchange rates. Operating income increased 38.6 billion yen from the previous fiscal year to 
301.7 billion yen, mainly due to increased sales, setting a new record for this segment for the fourth consecutive year and being the highest among our six business segments, as was the case last fiscal year. The FI23 profit contribution from visual, media, and platform accounted for approximately 10% of the segment's operating income. The FI24 forecast for sales is 1 trillion 690 billion yen, and operating income is 315 billion yen. Streaming revenue in the previous quarter continued to grow on a US dollar basis with both recorded music and music publishing each increasing 11% year on year. In terms of recorded music, an average of 31 songs were ranked in the top 100 on Spotify's weekly global song rankings for the whole of FI23. Moreover, Beyonce's new album, Cowboy Carter, released on March 29th, has become a hit, ranking number one in the U.S. album chart immediately upon its release. Streaming revenue in music publishing has grown significantly, with a CAGR of 38% over the four, year, four years since FI20, thanks to an expansion of opportunities to monetize our music catalog, which have been available for a certain period of time. We have been strengthening our music catalog since making EMI Music Publishing a wholly owned subsidiary in 2018, and the number of songs we managed at the end of March was approximately 6.24 million, an increase of 1.7 times over the past 10 years. We also maintain the top global market share in music publishing. The value of music catalogs as IP assets is expanding significantly, and we intend to further expand the monetization opportunities of these IP assets primarily by maximizing synergies between the entertainment businesses. Next is the pictures segment. Although there was a decrease in the number of television program deliveries, FY23 sales increased 9% year on year to 1 trillion of 493.1 billion yen due to an increase in the number of theatrical releases and the impact of foreign exchange rates. Operating income was 117.7 billion yen, essentially flat year on year. This was primarily due to an increase in marketing costs resulting from the increased number of releases offset by the impact of the increase in sales. Our FI24 forecast for the sales is 1 trillion 480 billion yen and an operating income is 120 billion yen. The negative impact on the profitability of the Hollywood strikes in FI23 is estimated to have been approximately 118 billion yen caused by changes in the film releases schedules and delay in the delivery of the television programs. We believe the negative impact of the strikes and unprofitability will peak in FI24, and we have incorporated approximately 34 billion yen as the impact into the four-year forecast. Regarding Crunchyroll, we are expecting it to contribute even more to the operating income of the entire segment due to the sales growth, primarily from an increase in the global playing subscribers and an overseas distribution of anime products, as well as the reduced amortization expenses associated with the acquisition. In motion pictures, we have plans to release major titles in FI24, such as the sequel to the popular Bad Boys franchise, Bad Boys Ride or Die, as well as new titles from the Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters, Venom, The Last Dance, and then Craven the Hunter. Next, the ETNS uh, segment. FI23 sales were 2 trillion 453.7 billion yen, essentially flat year on year. This was mainly due to a decrease in the unit sales of televisions offset by an impact uh, from the foreign exchange rates. Operating income increased 7.9 billion yen year on year to 187.4 billion yen, mainly due to the favorable impact of foreign exchange rates and the benefit of the cost reductions despite the impact of a lower sales in televisions. 
our FY24 forecast for sales is 2 trillion 370 billion yen, and an operating income is 190 billion yen. In FY23, the digital cameras and the interchangeable lenses and generated increased sales and operating income thanks to enhanced product appeals and televisions and the mobile communication reduced costs, enabling the entire segment to achieve a level of uh, operating income that exceeded FY22 results and in our projection at the beginning of FY23. Moreover, four-year operating cash flow was 322.8 billion and the largest amount our five-year business segment, excluding the financial services segment, due to improved profitability, profitabilities and significant inventory reductions, mainly in televisions. The market for interchangeable lens and mirrorless cameras, which is the main source of sales and profit for this segment, showed a strong growth in the previous quarter, mainly in China and Japan, and has continued to remain strong since April. We expect this market growth to gradually decelerate uh, from the second half of this year, this fiscal year onward, but we believe this will remain stable going forward. Next, the uh, iron and SS segment. FY23 sales increased a significant 14% year on year to 1 trillion 602.7 billion yen, mainly due to increased sales of the image sensors for mobile products and the impact of uh, foreign exchange rates. Despite the impact of increased sales, operating income decreased to eight, uh, decreased 18.7 billion yen year on year to 193.5 billion yen, mainly due to an increase in expenses, including depreciation and amortization expenses. Our FY24 forecast for sales is 1 trillion. 840 billion yen and operating income is 270 billion yen, which would, would be a record high for this segment. In the current smartphone product market, while unit sales in the previous quarter in China slightly exceeded the same period of the previous year, stagnation continues in the US and in other parts of Asia, and we believe the global recovery will be very slow. In this market environment, our mobile sensor business is expected to continue to grow due to larger die size sensors and higher added value and an expanded market share. And we plan to achieve year-on-year -year sales growth in the FY24 of 10% or more for the third year in a row. In addition to the trend of increasing the die size of the wide-angle camera sensors, smartphone manufacturers are working to increase the size and then improve the image quality and the performance of the extra wide-angle and the telephoto uh, camera sensors. And then we believe this will be the growth driver for the mobile sensor market over the next few years. To accommodate uh, these trends towards larger die sizes and higher added value, we are focusing our sensor development on improving pixel performance and characteristics. We are developing high-performance sensors while focusing on the number of manufacturing processes and productivity as well as improving production yields through pixel design. These uh, efforts are expected to contribute to future investment and efficiency in cost re, uh, improvements. In addition, with regards to improving the yield of a mobile sensor, which had been a top priority since the previous fiscal year, we have been making a progress at the pace that slightly exceeds our plan. As a result, we expect to be able to reduce the impact on profitability for this fiscal year to approximately 18 billion and almost half of the previous fiscal year. Last is the financial services segment. The financial service revenue for FY23 was 1 trillion. 770 billion yen, almost double year on year, mainly due to the impact of a market fluctuation on Sony Life Inc. Operating income decreased a significant 144.5 billion yen year on year, year, on year to 173.6 billion yen. This was primarily due to a decrease in the net gains related to market fluctuations for variable insurance and other products of the Sony Life, as well as recording of the gains on the stable a sales of the uh, uh, real estate at the Sony Life and a recovery of funds related to unauthorized withdrawal in the previous fiscal year. And these negative factors are primarily offset by the uh, recording of the gain, and mainly from the transfer of the portion of the shares of the Sony Payment Services uh, Inc. The F524 forecast for the financial services revenue is 910 billion yen, and operating income is 145 billion yen, a decrease of the 228.6 6 billion yen from the previous fiscal year, which included the recording of the gain from the transfer I previously mentioned. Please note that this forecast does not take into account the impact of the market fluctuation on the Sony Life. 
now, I would like to explain the fluctuations in operating income that have been particularly notable since the adoption of IFRS 17. This is the trend of the breakdown of a Sony Life's quarterly uh, operating income, while insurance services results, which are the base profit for the business, have generally remained stable investment gains and losses have fluctuated gra uh, gr greatly due to the changes in the market conditions. The majority of the investment gains and losses consist of unrealized valuation gains and losses. We are considering the measures to curve these fluctuations in gains and losses, including the transfer of the previously controlled insurance contracts to the external parties through reinsurance transactions. This concludes our explanation of our financial results for FY23 and the results forecast for FY24. Next, Totoki will explain our mid-range plan. Totoki-san, please go ahead. Now I'd like to talk about our mid-range plan. First, let me give a brief overview of our fourth mid-range plan. Under the theme of our fourth mid-range plan, Sony's evolution, we have been working to evolve our corporate architecture and business portfolio to drive growth for the entire group. In April 2021, we transitioned from a large headquarters housing support functions for our electronics business to Sony Group Corporation being a scaled-down group headquarters. By doing so, we established a structure to promote the growth of the group in an equidistant relationship with each business. Regarding our business portfolio, we are making concrete preparations for a partial spin-off of the financial services business in October 2025, with the aim of achieving further growth in both the financial services business and our other businesses. Additionally, by concentrating capital allocation on the growth areas of the three entertainment businesses and the INSS business, we were able to significantly increase the combined sales of these four business segments, creating a more growth-oriented business portfolio. Thanks to these efforts, the KPI we set as a growth indicator for the fourth mid-range plan period, three-year cumulative consolidated adjusted EBDA, was 5.1 trillion yen, 19% higher than our initial target, and 42% higher than the amount generated during the third mid-range plan period. In addition, our ability to generate profits is steadily improving. The average annual growth rate of consolidated operating income excluding the financial services segment was 9.0% from FY 2020 to FY 2023. Now I'd like to talk about our fifth mid-range plan. We are presenting the plan excluding the financial services segment, and Endo, the head of that business, will provide an explanation of the mid-range plan of the financial services segment at the business segment meeting scheduled for May 31st. The themes of the fifth mid-range plan are beyond the boundaries and maximum synergies across the group, with the intention of continuing to implement the proactive initiatives we have been implementing to further realize synergies and achieve more growth for the entire group. During this mid-range plan, no changes are planned to our strategy of working to increase corporate value through continuous growth. While further strengthening our efforts to realize group synergies, we plan to focus on implementing measures to achieve mid- to long-term growth in our three entertainment and image sensor businesses. At the same time, we expect the business environment to remain uncertain and volatile during the period of this mid-range plan and beyond. In order to further increase our resilience to such environmental changes, we aim to work to strengthen our earnings base through the ongoing evolution of our business portfolio and to improve investment efficiency and business profitability. Consequently, for the period of this mid-range plan, we have placed greater emphasis on profit-based growth KPIs, and we have set as KPIs for the entire group the growth rate of consolidated operating income and operating income margin. Specifically, we aim to increase consolidated operating income during this mid-range plan, primarily in GNNS and INSS, and achieve an average annual growth rate of 10% or more, 
and a three-year cumulative consolidated operating income margin of 10% or more. In addition, we have positioned as an important indicator the sales growth of the game software and network services businesses in GNNS, the music, the pictures, and the image sensor businesses. We also plan to regularly report progress on consolidated operating cash flow, which is the source of capital allocation. I will now discuss the main focus measures for each business under the fifth mid-range plan. Further details will be provided by each business leader at the business segment meeting on May 30th and 31st. In the GNNS segment, under the theme of console and beyond, we aim to drive profit growth of the Sony Group by expanding the stable installed base of PlayStation consoles, providing richer gaming experiences, and growing our business through the two-pronged approach of expanding into PCs and enhancing the first-party software titles originating from our in-house studios into which we have invested. In the music segment, we continue to aim to grow faster than the market by strengthening our efforts in emerging markets, increasing monetization opportunities for our music catalog, and incorporating adjacent businesses such as merchandising. We also plan to accelerate the global expansion of Japanese anime and artists. In the pictured segment, which serves as the core of collaboration between the three entertainment businesses, we aim to maximize the value of the IP assets held by the Sony Group. Furthermore, we aim to achieve profitable growth with Crunchyroll, a DTC service that deeply engages with anime fans and anime creators as a growth driver. In the ETNS segment, we plan to continue to control risks in businesses facing severe environments such as televisions while steadily growing our highly profitable and technologically differentiated imaging and sound businesses and accelerating expansion into the growth access businesses. Through this, we aim to continue to shift the business portfolio of the entire segment and generate cash that supports the Sony Group. In the INSS segment, we intend to maintain our high growth rate primarily in mobile sensors and focus especially on increasing profitability, improving investment efficiency, and reinforcing development and manufacturing during the period of the fifth MRP. We also plan to proceed with the launch of new growth businesses that will follow from mobile sensors, such as automotive sensors, while maintaining financial discipline and a long-term perspective. Next, I'd like to explain capital allocation during the term of the fifth mid-range plan. Three-year cumulative consolidated operating cash flow, the main source of allocation, is expected to be 4.5 trillion yen, significantly exceeding the results of the fourth mid-range plan due to profit growth during the fifth mid-range plan as well as the recovery of working capital that increased during the previous mid-range plan. With regard to capital expenditures, we expect to spend 1.7 trillion yen, a decrease of 0.2 trillion yen from the previous MRP, taking into account that investment for image sensors is expected to decrease from the previous MRP period. With regard to strategic investments, we plan to allocate 1.8 trillion yen to business growth investments and flexible share repurchases. We will continue to work toward mid to long term growth of our business through such means as acquisition of IP and M&A, but we intend to emphasize investment efficiency and be more selective in the strategic arena. The biggest change from the capital allocation strategy under the previous mid-range plan is that we plan to allocate any increase in free cash flow during the period of this mid-range plan, primarily to shareholder returns. With regard to shareholder returns, we plan to place emphasis on the total payout ratio, which we expect to gradually increase throughout the period of the fifth mid-range plan, aiming for approximately 40% in FY2026, the final fiscal year of the plan. To this end, we set aside 250 billion yen for share buybacks for this fiscal year, the first year of the MRP, which exceeds the amount we acquired in the previous fiscal year. Regarding dividends, our policy is to continue to increase dividends steadily while accelerating the pace of dividend increases. In addition, with the aim of further expanding the investor base that holds our shares, at the board of directors meeting held today, it was 
Republicans decided to implement a stock split with a record date of September 30th, 2024 and an effective date of October 1st, 2024. These are the main points of our fifth mid-range plan. At the corporate strategy meeting scheduled for May 23rd, CEO Yoshida and I will explain the direction of our group's businesses over the longer term. That's all for the explanation. The presentation was given by Totoki, Matsuoka, and Hayakawa. After this, from 4.35, Q&A with media, and from 5 o'clock, Q&A with investors and analysts will take place. We are allocating about 20 minutes for Q&A each. Those of you who have registered to ask questions in advance, please connect the telephone to the designated number in advance. And as for the way of asking questions and points to be noted, please look at the invitation letter that we have sent to you in advance. Would you kindly wait until the Q&A session begins? Thank you for waiting. We will now begin uh, entertaining questions from the members of the media. As was the case of the presentation, the people, three people listed on the slide will be responding to your questions. Now we will begin the Q&A session. I would like to ask you to limit your questions to two. If you have any question, please press the star key followed by one. The first question will be by Umegaki-san from Toyo Keizai. Mr. Umegaki-san, please. Umegaki from Toyo Keizai, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I have two questions, if I may. Earlier, you talk about uh, strengthening the shareholder returns, including that enhancing enterprise view. I'd like to hear the view of Totoki-san. Enterprise view, uh, value will be regarded as a cash flow generation and discounted value in the future. Uh, as compared to the previous uh, mid-range plan, we'll be reducing investment and we'll be increasing returns to shareholders compared to the previous uh, mid-range plan. How are you going to enhance enterprise value if there's any change or differences in the thinking? Please explain. Secondly, the Paramount Group acquisition, according to the media report, I'm sure that there's limit to what you can share with us, but it, is it true that you are making proposals and strengthening your entertainment business in the mid-range plan? Is there any consistency? Can you please comment on that, please? Thank you very much for your questions. First, as to the thinking about enterprise value, compared to the fourth mid-range plan, I talked about the capital allocation earlier. CapEx will be slightly less this, this time. Also, up the, including the return of the working capital during the fifth mid-range plan period, as compared to the previous three years, basically, uh, there will be a better cash flow position. So we will be utilizing that for return to the shareholders. That is the basic thinking. Enterprise value has to be enhanced on, in a sustainable manner. Fourth mid-range plan period, we have been making investment in advance for the growth of the future. We have been sowing seeds for the growth in the future. In the fifth mid-range plan will be uh, Harvest, harvesting from the seed that we have uh, sown in the previous uh, mid-range plan so that we can enhance the enterprise value in the future. That is the basic thinking behind coming up with the mid-range plan. And the secondly, uh, that it's reported and we have not made any announcement at all. So specific deal, I would like to refrain from making any comment about specific deal. But on the other hand, lots of information are uh, there. And uh, at this point, our strategy, uh, including the thinking on the capital allocation, I would like to comprehensively explain to you our thinking. Game and music and the pictures. With the IP, we are going to generate synergy, which is a unique strength of Sony Group. And this is a core of our growth strategy. Sony Pictures 
is a hub of generating synergy, and as an entity, this has an important position. Therefore, in this area, if there is any good opportunity, then appropriate uh, value and uh, uh, return on investment can be expected. On that assumption, we consider possibilities, which is only too natural. However, in the fourth mid-range plan, the capital allocation result in the past three years, three-year uh, strategic investment itself excluding the uh, share buyback was 1.3 trillion yen, of which three quarters were allocated to three entertainment segments. Music is the largest, followed by game and pictures, about the same amount. And the purpose of investment, IP acquisition, is the largest in proportion. Roughly speaking, the next three years, the basic policy will be continued. That's what we have in mind. At the risk of being repetitive, the strategic investment for the fifth mid-range uh, uh, plan, including flexible share buyback, is 1.8 trillion yen. Within this amount, three years period, uh, for s without uh, uh, focusing upon any particular segment, we'll be making a strategic investment and flexible share buyback. That is our basic thinking. So I do hope that you can understand our basic stance that concludes my explanation. Thank you. Let's move on to the next question. Oomitsu-san uh, from Nikkei Shinbun. Please go ahead. And can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. And I do have two questions. The first one is as follows. In an uh, SIE, the uh, restructuring reduction and how much impact on the impact on FI 23 or 24. And then also, um, the um, as per today's announcement, and, and you made an announcement about some people changes, and th does that conclude all the restructuring activities? And then also, 1.2 trillion yen of a strategic investment you mentioned. Can you give us a breakdown by segment? Thank you very much for your questions. First, the SIE, the structural reform. And, all, and I think uh, there's a question on that. And FI23, and we have the double digit um, hundreds of millions of the constru uh, structural reform expenses are recorded. And then also that will, con will continue into FI24. So for the most part, and I, I think we um, ha will need the same level of ex uh, cost and expenses. And in FI25, there will be uh, cost improvement. So for overall, uh, in terms of cost improvement in FI25 onward, and we expect the cost uh, improvement uh, f effects and to materialize. And then as for the people uh, changes, and it's not really related, and uh, just announced, it's not directly related to the structure reform. And another question, the other question is about the, the strategic investment uh, broken down by segment. And at this point in time, and we have a general idea, but we don't do not have the granular uh, breakdown by segment. And then I think we need to make a decision at the opportune timing. But just looking back on the yeah, three years that have ended and looking at the breakdown, like I said, and 1.3 trillion yen over the three years, and then a three-fourth uh, is given to the three entertainment segments. And then among three entertainment segments, the music is the largest, followed by game and pictures. So that will help you sort of uh, visualize uh, the strategic in investment uh, uh, coming in the next three years. That's all. We'd like to take the next question from Asahi newspaper. Tanaka-san, please. I'm Tanaka from Asahi newspaper. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. The first question is about the foreign exchange rate the forex impact for the entire group 
in total for the sales and the income, what was the upward impact, the positive impact? And the weakening of the yen is accelerating. So how are you viewing this current trend, Mr. Totoki? And the second question is about the image sensor. It's performing uh, well, and I'd like to ask you the reason. The smartphone market itself is shrinking, and especially FY2023, the sales units are quite low, but the so image sensor by Sony was doing well. So what was the reason for that? Thank you for your questions. First, on the Forex impact, the details will be explained by Hayakawa. But regarding the weakening of the yen, my view is the following. When it comes to the Forex, there is no control over that. So we will have to adapt to the situation. But if there is a rapid change, that is going to be unfavorable in managing a business. That is my view. Hayakawa-san, please. Regarding the Forex, uh, in the previous year's performance, the impact by that, uh, FY2023, the performance by segment, uh, the material is showing the Forex impact. So please take a look at that. Basically, last fiscal year, uh, versus dollar, the weakening of the yen was seen, and also the dollar was uh, weaker versus the euros. So on a consolidated basis in income, uh, 140 billion yen, positive impact from Forex came to us. That's all from my side. Thank you. Next on the INSS uh, business-related question, as you said, Rightly, regarding the FY2023, the smartphone market itself was not very, uh, not quite strong. And um, in FY24 and beyond, we believe that uh, it will be recovering slowly. Our sensor business is performing well because the, not because of the sales units of smartphones, but it's because of the main camera um, and large size dies of such cameras. Regarding the wide angle cameras, uh, it has become larger in size, but at the same time, the wide ultra wide angle as well as the telephono uh, cameras. They will become larger in size and as a result, our sensor demand uh, will become stronger. That's all. I'd like to move on to the next question. Bloomberg, Furukawa-san, please. Furukawa from Bloomberg, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. <clears throat> it may be difficult to comment, I'm sure, but in addition to report on Paramount, in music also, Integra, joining hands with in, I, I, Integra, acquiring of Infocom's uh, shares of Teichin. What is the fact and the deals? What, what is your thinking for the need of such deals? The second point, after that, recently, Yen is uh, depreciating, and uh, overseas M&A will become difficult, or are there opportunities that to uh, delaying M&A? And are there all the impact of the weaker yen upon M&A deal? And are there concerns? These are my questions. Thank you for your questions. Report as for the media report. These are not what we have announced. So I'd like to refrain from make, making any comments. I'm sorry for that. Now, weaker yen will have impact upon M&A overseas, or is there going to be delay or postponement of uh, consideration of M&A? What's your question? M&A overseas, basically, this is out-out return is also in foreign currency. Therefore, it's not so difficult for us to do. But rather, in each currency, we set hurdle rate, acquisition, 
base return is to be looked at with the hurdle rate. So looking at the hurdle rate and determine whether uh, we are going to do that or not. That's all. Thank you. And with limited time remaining, so uh, we have one more uh, question. We have time for one more question. And if you have any question, uh, please press star followed by one. Hiraoka-san from Newspix, uh, please go ahead. This is Hiraoka uh, from Newspix, and if uh, I hope you can hear me. And I have a question about image sensor business. And on the profit and loss, and uh, the image sensor business seems to be doing fine. But when looking at the cash flow, if my memory serves me right, and FY23, and, and for the three years in a row, the free cash flow was negative. And so basically, uh, the cash flow coming in is smaller. And and with the cash coming in, and that will increase the value of the asset. And and, and I believe, and I, um, I, and I would like to know whether this is a concern, a financially, uh, financial perspective. And then also, and and Japan display a factory buyback. And I don't think you can talk about the specific. And an OLED uh, display uh, with a high level resolution is being manufactured by you. And 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 will this become the uh, the growth driver going forward, following the image sensor? And what's your prospect on that? So let me answer your questions. The first question. So looking at our image sensor, investment in our image sensor, but basically uh, most of it is a cap capex. And then so depending on the uh, capital expenditure, uh, the investment, of course, we need to do a demortization or amortization or depreciation. And so, so usually the year of the uh, depreciation is uh, five years, usually. So in other words, the goodwill on the balance sheet, uh, the asset that will remain on the balance sheet uh, for long term. And depending on the co company performance, we will decide to write off or not. Uh, that's different in nature. So for our capex, and then there are, we set our standards, and we want to recoup the investment and after four to five years. And that is one of the uh, criteria for the investment. So the current investment that we are making, uh, we don't have any concerns. And in addition to this, and in the fifth and mid-range plan, uh, we expect the free cash flow, uh, flow to increase or improve, and this will become a positive uh, factor. And as for the OLED of factory buyback, which could potentially become the uh, next uh, growth driver after imaging sensor. Well, still, this business is so small in scale, and I don't expect that to make a significant contribution, the same level of con contribution as the imaging. But, but, but with this, I think there will be an opportunity to go in to take on new challenges and going into new devices. So we would like to take on the challenge for the mid to long term perspective. And the, now that time has come, uh, we would like to conclude the Q&A session uh, for the uh, members of the media. The Q&A session for investor and analysts will start at 5 p.m. We will begin the Q&A with investors and analysts shortly. Please give us one moment before we resume the session. Thank you. Thank you very much for waiting. We now begin the Q&A with investors and analysts. I will be serving as a moderator. I'm Kondo from IR division. These are the three presenters who will be answering your questions, the same as the presenters from the media session. The 
process of asking questions as well as the procedures are already shown in the handout. And please limit your questions to two. We now begin the Q&A. If you have a question, please press asterisk followed by one. From JP Morgan, Ayada-san, please. Thank you very much. I'm Ayada from JP Morgan. I have two questions related to mid-range plan. The first question on game. Mr. Totoki earlier said that for the next three years, the focus focused KPI will be software and network service in the game segment. So for these two areas, for the next three years, what kind of paths or growth are you expecting? For example, in software, the um, play title will be at the juncture this year, but Concord and um, other live services were introduced earlier. Do you think that there will be growth in this area? And beyond the next fiscal year onward, triple A titles, is that what you are expecting highly? Similarly, for network, uh, it's not clear how many members you can expect, but what is your uh, view for the next fiscal year? The second question, you talked about the capex and the depreciation period will be five years. On the other hand, the strategic investment, especially the studio acquisition and other acquisitions related return timeline, what is your view on that? Listening to your presentation, you said that in the previous three-year period, the return on the studio acquisition uh, can be gained in the next fiscal year. N next three years, excuse me. So what is the timeline? Do you think that it will be three years or five years to get the return from the investment? And are you going to keep that in mind as you make investment? That's the second question. Thank you for your questions. First the software and network service. Software, the first party and third party, that's how we should distinguish them. The third party software, uh, we believe that we are going to uh, move along with the market growth, so we will grow in line with the growth of the market. That is the cent at the center of our plan. As for the first party softwares, for FY25 and 26, the tentpole-like titles and live services will be launched. So for FY25 and 26, so this fiscal year is 2024, so in 25 and 26 fiscal years, uh, the first party software related revenue will be larger than this fiscal year. That is our expectation that's incorporated into this plan. And another point is about network service. So all in all, MAU growth versus the MAU growth, we believe that our growth will be linear to that. So unless MAU grows, then our segment grow, business will not grow. But MAU is slowly growing. That is our understanding. So in the previous year, we announced the price increase and impact, positive impact from that will be gained. So the market as a whole, software growth is one, but we believe that our growth will be stronger in terms of value. That is our rough idea. And next on the return on our investment and our, our view on that is the following. So studio acquisition. Basically, the first party software lineup needs to be ramped up. So for this reason, we are making investment in the area and we are uh, continuing to develop this area. And originally, we expected some return, but 
whether we can gain the originally expected return or not has been validated. In the previous um, year's rec track record, IRR on the studio acquisition was relatively high, all in all. But the issue is that based on it, the, the return is not yielded based on the original um, expectation because um, yield has slippages, the brushing up of the titles, and also the quality may not be as high as expected by the users, so we have to brush up the titles. So the, there has been more slippages than we expected at the beginning. So we have to factor them in. For the next three years period, how effectively can we make a portfolio, build a portfolio? That's going to be important. That's all. <clears throat> We'd like to move on to the next question. View of A Securities, Hirakawa san, please. Thank you. Hiraka from View of A Securities, two questions. First is about game. In game, PS4 user base is to be maintained. So in the you will come up with a record high in the next mid-range plan. Active user uh, active user base is 118 million, exceeding uh, 59 million. But the PS4, PS5, third party uh, burden is there as well. Why is it? that the uh, way of uh, profit generated is going to be different from the previous uh, console cycle. In order to realize record high profit, what are you going to focus upon? That's my first question. Second question, I and SSS. A good impact of the larger size, I understand, but the share increase from 2020 in China, other than fair, fair way, you have uh, increased market share. Uh, the real uh, semiconductor is there, and high end uh, uh, entered into high end area as well. And the share expansion is continuing in China, or you have come to a plateau in China. Can you please uh, enlighten us as to that point as well? Thank you very much for your questions. Firstly, PS4. In my presentation, I talked about the growth uh, during the PS4 and uh, PS5 and the growth in that generation. I have explained in uh, different ways. In the past, PS compared to PS4, the way of uh, profit generated is as follows. At the time of PS4, basically, a network service was expanded. PS5. Uh, we continue with the, uh, we succeeded the expanded base. So the launch pad is already high. And the cruising uh, speed is going to become the cruising speed based upon that launch pad. But uh, in that, what was difficult to forecast is the impact of COVID-19 and the tailwind. Game market, whether this will lead to increase in the game market or it's a temporary tailwind. There was a discussion back then as well. And then in addition to that, specific titles, live service uh, uh, titles, uh, big hit was a tailwind. So it was very difficult to see the actual underlying trend. But what we are focusing upon now is uh, what we call platform health. For instance, MAU, playtime, whether these are stable or not, and whether these are expanding. These are the important indicators. And uh, number of uh, data points are set, and we analyze the data and uh, maintain platform health and uh, st healthily grow. That is a core of our strategy. Therefore, cumulative sales uh, uh, unit f is 59 million uh, units or plus uh, compared to MAU still. About uh, half of the people are uh, playing this on PS4. So console generation overlap will be handled well, and MAU will stead steadily increase. We will be managing in this way going forward. 
And then I and SSS. Now, vis a vis specific customer in China, you are not able to sell unless you have a license. So, with the technology, it is not a market where we can compete freely with the technology that we have. So it's very difficult to analyze uh, competitors' movement. It's not that we are operating in a free market. So what we do is uh, to uh, try and uh, increase our market share in the market where we can compete freely. Thank you very much. Let's move on to Nakane-san uh, of Mizuho Securities. Go ahead. And this is Nakane from Mizuho Securities. And I do have two questions about game. The first one is Bungie. And new and the new title will be released in the next uh, this year in the fiscal year, and then that will be crucial. And then, and then sales and then profit. When are you planning to hit the break even? And also your cost, and I think which peaked last year for the next three years, and including this fiscal year. What sort of uh, cost are you expecting? to uh, spend. And then second question is the new struct org structures for game in Nishino-san and Atana-san. Uh, and then what are the uh, hosts on, uh, what are the strengths that they have? And what are the key changes from the, uh, their successors? And I'm sure they are going to talk about their resolution at the next uh, uh, meeting. But what's your expectation to talk from Tokyoki-san's perspective? And to uh, sustainable growth and then also margin growth. And then uh, there was a really productive uh, comments about not understanding that. So what sort of a changes that led to these uh, changes in, in the personnel? And if you could just talk about your perspective on this, that would be great. So first, with regards to Bungie, in FY23, and there's no profit contribution. And of course, and we are developing a new IP, new contents. And this will become a really significantly large title. So we need to really carefully evaluate that. But in FI24, and at this moment, we are not really expecting any uh, contribution or profit contribution from it. But the, the development capability and then also operational capabilities, and there will be a significant contribution. And this upcoming release in July, and there's a one title that we are planning to uh, release in July. So we will take a wait and see approach and how that will be. And then also the the recoupment of the cost of the acquisition. And currently, um, the f f a 52 billion yen based on the current exchange rate uh, is expected. And this will gradually decline in phases. But for the most part, in FI23, the first half, uh, of course, the cost will continue to be needed. But every year, uh, there will be expected decline by 20 to 30 percent. And for the new org structure, and the 52 billion yen is the acquisition cost ex uh, that includes acquisition uh, outside of the country. And in GNNS uh, organization, and the reason why I picked these two uh, individual and, and platform business and then studio business, they have a really strong uh, background and then talents and then experience and then insights. And so what would be the expected changes under the new the organization? Now we have the two leaders at the top. And SIE uh, will grow, uh, has grown significantly in size and scale. And also, the PS Studio 
the business strategy and the need for that will continue to increase. So we need to be able to、uh, make sure that our deci-、uh, the decisions are made in a timely manner and a really granular manner. So that's why we have picked、uh, two leaders. And that's my expectation. And both of them will become. Uh, we are really excellent talent、uh, that will create the next generation of our business, and I have a huge hope and expectations for them. And also, and I made some、uh, really the difficult comments、uh, previously, and t- to deliver a record high profit in the fifth、uh, MRP. And now that we, I, I was personally involved in SIE and I, I gained a first hand experience and connected a lot of people. And I believe that there are many talents、uh, in the organization, they are highly motivated. So, and both of them will. Uh, quite, uh, quite motivated、uh, to uh, deliver a record high profit. And I'm sure、uh, they are thinking a lot about this. And from an objective perspective, and given the current situation, I don't think,、uh, well, naturally,、uh, the record high profit can be delivered. That's all I, that's all I have. Since the time is running out, We will take only one question、uh, by each questioner from now on. Now, Ezawa san from Citigroup, please. I'm Ezawa from Citigroup, so、I'll, I will ask one question. Semiconductor. ROIC 10%, that's the plan for the new fiscal year. So, from the profit plan wise, the invested capital will increase to about 2 trillion yen. That is my understanding. So, that's the plan for this fiscal year. But for the mid range plan, for the next mid range plan period, the capital invested may continue to be on the level of. 100 billion yen increase on a yearly basis. Would that be the case? Thank you for your question. The CapEx, I already explained that earlier. So, the about 70% level of the fourth mid range plan will continue. As for the increase of the invested capital, basically, We have grown the sales significantly, which means that the business scale will grow as well. Accordingly, the capital invested will also increase naturally. The invested capital, the absolute value increasing, is not the focus, but rather whether it is leading to the appropriate. Increase of the business as well as the margin increase. That will be the key focus. That will be more important. But of course, if when we reach peak, then we will have to get return from the invested capital. So that's what we have demonstrated in the game business. And I believe that the invest,、uh, capital investment will become slower. So we will maintain the soundness of the financial status and maintain our competitiveness as we invest our capital to grow our business. That's all. Next person will be the last person to ask a question. SNBC Inco Securities, Katsura san, please. Thank you, Katsura from SNBC Inco Securities. One question so, about the capital allocation and the total payout ratio in the final year,、uh, it 40%. You are setting 40%. What is the background and your thinking behind this? In the past three years, what w a s the actual numbers in the past three years? And、uh, what is the background for coming to the target of 40% total payout ratio? 
final year of the mid-range plan, uh, the 40 percent total payout ratio. As I talked about capital allocation later and explained this point, for the next three years, operating cash flow will be increased, which will be the source for capital allocation. And the capex will not increase as much. And for strategic investment, uh, we will be selective in making strategic investment. And rather, we will come to a, f a phase where we'll be able to see results and uh, reap results from the investment made in the past. Hence, we'll be making return to the investors, including the past three years. Hayakawa-san, could you please uh, explain, give some supplementary comment? Thank you, Kami Katsura-san. Total payout ratio in the previous mid-range plan, FI21 was 19%, and 19% for FI22. Last uh, 23, FI23, 200 billion yen of buyback included 32%. As uh, Totoki said, uh, operating cash flow will increase in the next three years, and also investment. Uh, we'll be looking at the efficiency of investment. We'll make investment, but well-balanced capital allocation will be done and strengthened uh, return to the shareholders. Uh, therefore, in FI26, we are going to uh, achieve 40 percent. That is a plan and the back background of thinking in that way. Thank you. With this, we'd like to conclude. Uh, Sony Group uh, uh, Corporation's financial results uh, announcement. I thank you very much for joining us today.